The Rangers are coming, but where will they come by the end of the season? That we're going to have a look at as Chris Boyd and Chris Sutton give their final Scottish Premiership predictions. Welcome back, guys, to Fog Football. Yes, we're four games into the season. Yes, we're heading into the middle of September, but Boyd and Sutton, I guess they're cheaters. They're only giving their league predictions now. Yeah, I don't understand why they're doing that. I guess it does throw a spanner in the works considering the poor starts of Kelly, Hearts and Co and the great start of Aberdeen. But at the same time, I think they're predicting an already predictable league table four games into the season. That's the way I'm looking at it. But here, better late than never, I guess. Eh? Gets us a wee talking point and a slow news week because international football is killing us. Yeah, it's slow news week and it's not like Scotland did anything great so we can't even brag about it. You know, we can't drag Scottish feds out for a couple of days. No. Let's face it, Scotland lost both games. We don't want to talk about it anymore. Had we beat Portugal, yes, I'm sure we could have invented some crazy topic to talk about right now, but we didn't. We lost and Ronaldo's a prick. So with that said, let's talk about these predictions. So we're going to go through the order in our predictions and then we will talk about where Boyd and Sutton predicted that team to finish. So with that said, we predicted St Johnston to finish 12th. Now, let's go with Boyd and Sutton. We'll start with Boyd first because we feel sorry for him because his team fucking sucks. So I guess that's... We'll go with Boyd's predictions first, then we'll move into Sutton. So St Johnston, Chris Boyd has predicted 11th. He said, quote, the strikers will be the ones that keep them in that playoff spot. Craig Levine just has a knack of finding that result whenever he needs one. And you get the feeling it could be the same again this season. He might just have enough to keep them up, but a lot of that will depend on Ross County. End of quote. Now, Chris Sutton believes that St. Johnston, just like us, will go down. He's got them in 12th place. Sutton said, quote, Craig Levine's got a difficult job at St. Johnston. They've got a couple of lively centre-forwards holding on to Adama Sibidi is a huge plus. But I think that this season will be too much for them. It has already been a tough start with three defeats from their opening four games. And it is hard to see them picking up too many wins this season. End of quote. Thoughts on Sutton and Boyd? And their St. Johnson predictions. I mean, it's pretty much the same thing, isn't it? But apart from Boyd, oh, it depends on Ross County. We put them 12. Sutton put them 12. Boyd thinks they'll be right down there. They are shite. The owner, Adam Webb, came out and said, oh, we're cutting the allocations to the old firm because we want to build as a football club. I just don't see it happening. I think we could be build... building in the championship. Yeah, he could be building in the championship. But I think St. Johnson need to get rid of Craig Lafine. Um I mean, it's been an all right start to the season, I guess, for St. Johnson, But... I just don't see a future with Craig Lafine. Well, Craig, Sutton, Craig Lafine is the guy you bring in to keep your team up. They Sutton, did that. Well, Sutton said it's been a tough start this season. I don't think... Well, I mean, what what, what does what does he expect? Yeah, but... You know what? As negative as it is, see, as a St. Johnston fan, see if you just offered them a win. They're no nowhere near the bottom of the table. I think they would I think they would maybe take that. Yeah. See, if you said to St. Johnston here, you'll get a win in your first four games, I think they'd be like, all right, well, that's fair enough. That's what they've been dealt. You know, we'll get three points on the board. I think they'd take it. Uh, anyway, we agree with Sutton, not so much Boyd. I, I do see Boyd's... I can see Boyd's point, though. It could really come down to Ross County and how bad they are. But for me, St. Johnson will be somewhere down the bottom of the table. And I do see them being in a relegation spot, whether it is automatic or playoff. Totally agree. And uh, speaking of Ross County, that's who we put in 11th place. Because guess what, guys? They're mints. Yeah, they are pretty mince, but what has Boyd done with Ross County? He's put them in 12th. Boyd said, quote, Do we see Roy McGregor going and splashing the cash again to try and keep them in the top flight? Maybe. If that's the case, then I fear for St. Johnston. At this moment, I just think that Ross County are the ones who will go straight down. End of quote. Chris Sutton, though, has got them in at 11th. Sutton said, quote, Ross County always finish 11th. Don Cowie is quiet, a quiet and unassuming guy, and he's got a tough job. An overhaul of players every season, and that makes it difficult to get the team organised. Losing Yandanda is a blow for them, because he was so influential, they will probably stay up via the playoffs again. End of quote. Now, before we get into what Boyd and Sutton said about Ross County, Don Cowie is a quiet guy, according to Chris Sutton, and that just brought something to my attention. I was listening to Super Scoreboard on Monday, 
Uh, Cammy Bell was on the show and, you know, you and Cameron was hosting it. And I felt sorry for you and Cameron because his two pundits were Cammy Bell and Simon Donnelly. Oh. <laughs> and uh, you and Cameron even said at the start of the show, if I could have picked any two pundits, I certainly wouldn't have picked you as two. <laughs> I got, I got me a laugh. But anyway, the point I'm trying to make is he was dealt a bad hand. But well, wait, hold on. What did they, What did those two do when he said that? <laughs> they kind of laughed and agreed. <laughs> Maybe they know they're born as fuck. But anyway, uh, Cammy Bell was speaking about Steve Clark because you and Cameron brought it up when they were discussing should Steve Clark go or not. And Cammy Bell was part of the Kamarnik team when Steve Clark came in as manager. And Cammy Bell said. That when Steve Clark came in, the first thing Clark said to the dressing room is, I'm going to be honest with you guys, I'm really boring. <laughs> I don't know, just because he called Don Cowie quiet, it kind of just uh, brought that back to my memory. But imagine that being the first thing. But apparently after that, he put over the assistant manager and he's pretty funny though. <laughs> doesn't really work for me that, does does that does, can you imagine Steve can you imagine Steve Clark addressing the team for the first time speaking to them walking into the dressing room and going guys I'm going to be honest with you I'm really boring I can I he's, he is boring he's shite I don't care what he is he really delivers results that's what it but yeah I mean Cammy Bell Simon Donnelly talking about Steve Clark being boring <laughs> fuck me <laughs> Talk Hot about kettle black. Talk about not fucking must see television that right there. Right, anyway, back to the predictions. Boyd says twelve, Sutton says eleventh. Uh we are agreeing with Sutton. And uh, I mean Boyd just can't get anything right, can he? No, he can't get anything right, but here they're all in the same ballpark end of the day. What I would say is I think Ross County actually do spend a bit of money. We we do see when, when things are going tough for county, they do tend to pull out a decent transfer. Got that. They, Highland money. They, they do tend to pull out a decent transfer window. Yeah. And, and I just think that if it is a two-horse race come January, you would expect County to be the team to strengthen. Yeah. No, I would agree. But let's move in to 10th spot, as we have got Dundee United, who have had a pretty decent start to the season. But here, we didn't know that was going to happen, big man, did we? No, Dundee United, I mean, I just don't... I don't rate Jim Goodwin and people think that I, I, I hate the guy or something like that, or it's, I, I've got an issue with him being Irish. And that's certainly not the case because uh, there's what a video... When he got fired from Aberdeen, I was actually... No, I'm not going to say I was emotional, like, but I felt bad for the guy. I, I really Every did. Every day when you walk across the pitch. Yeah, see when he was with his wee handbag, and it is, or man bag, or his wee pouch, whatever it was. Duffel bag. I, I, I genuinely did feel sorry for Jim Goodwin, right? And he seems like an alright guy. I have nothing against him. I just think that... I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, you know, change my mind. He got fired from Aberdeen, and, and probably rightfully so, even though the players down tools on him, right? Results weren't good enough. He got fired from Aberdeen and landed a job with Dundee United. I, I, to me, that's about as good as you can hope for. And he got them relegated. And it stayed, I, I think he's had a, a stroke of luck. I agree, absolutely. It's hard to disagree with that. So for me, that that's the point I'm getting. I think he's lucky to be where he is because he got he got sacked for Aberdeen. Like, normally, when you get like Barry Robson, like he he didn't even get the Rafe Rovers job. No, nope. and no. and he did better Aberdeen than, than Jim Goodwin did. Yeah. So if we're, if we're talking size of club, a lot of people would agree that Dundee United are probably fifth or sixth, maybe sixth. Let's let's put them behind Hibs. Aye. You know, for I think for you to get sacked. After doing really badly at the third biggest club in Scotland and get a job in the sixth after that, it's, it's, that's good going. No, it, that's it, lucky. It is good going, but... And then take that team down. You know, I guess we've seen in the years, Premier League, it's, you've seen like Mourinho and Conte get sacked for Chelsea and get the, the Spurs. Yeah, down, but, but they've got the fucking experience. No, no, they do, they do. I'm not, I'm, <laughs> I mean, you know, they've got the trophies and Champions League. You know that shit? What's Jim Goodwin got? I don't know. Oh, I, I finished eighth with St Mirren trophy. Aye. But since he left St Mirren, look at what St Mirren went on. Went, no, I mean, so even that boats against him. Yeah, well, let's just talk about the stuff that matters here. Right, Boyd, Dundee United. He's went with ninth. He says, quote, The start that Jim Goodwin and his team has made has been impressive. I do have them in the bottom six because new teams often drop off. I might be a million miles away, though, because Tanadice is a difficult place to go, and they have started really well. Jim's recruitment has been good again. David... Babunski and Christian Trabanovsky have been strong additions to the squad. Jim also has a point to prove 
and there is a lot riding on this for his career as well. End of quote. Not quite sure how I pronounced both of those names perfectly, but I did, so I'm going to give myself a little pat on the back for that. As for Sutton, he's went one place lower than Boyd. He's went 10th. Sutton said, quote, Jim Goodwin's done well to get them back up and they were really busy in the transfer market. It has been a rebuilding job at Tanadice with 13 new signings over the summer and some have impressed already, but it will take some time for them all to gel. They have made a strong start to the campaign with two wins and two draws, but I think they will struggle to maintain that form. Dundee United are a big club though and they have enough to stay up. End of quote. I mean, I don't even think relegations I a thought process for me anymore when it comes to Dundee United. No, I, I've got to agree with that. Uh, it's interesting, though, that Chris Sutton is free for free with Fogg. He must have watched our fed because he's obsessed. Yeah, that's actually pretty strange. Chris Sutton is, is bang on the money. So far, we've went St. Johnston 12th, Ross County 11th, Dundee United 10th, and that's exactly what Chris Sutton has went with. But keep in mind, he's got the benefit or lack a benefit of putting Dundee United 10th because he's had a, a four game head start because honestly if I was reading my predictions I don't know I think I'd have Dundee United a bit higher yeah maybe 8th ninth. not much higher than that though true because when I look at the teams I still I still think the, yeah it's, it's tight it is just four games we're not talking 20 at the end of the day but here but they're unbeaten in the head of Rangers so Ah, yes, that's, that's mm -hmm. it. And they take Rangers on at Tanadice, guys, and I've got a sneaky feeling it won't be uh, three points for Rangers. Big, big game. Anyway, up next, we have Mullerwell in ninth. And I, I believe it's uh, it's your turn to uh, read this shite. It's my turn to read this shite. Well, Chris Boyd disagreed with us. No surprise there. Tenth spot he put them. And I quote, When you look at what they've lost... It could be a tough season ahead. Dio Bear is very difficult to replace. They do have some good youngsters there, but I do look at the team and wonder where the goals will come from. They have added Tony Watt, but you wonder, is that just a case of scrambling around to get someone towards the end of the transfer window? They could easily lose Lennon Miller in January. With all the changes, if they manage to finish at least 10th, it will be a successful season. End of quote. So, he's put them 10th. We've put them 9th. I mean, I think that's probably where Motherwell will finish. I think they've got too many good players to get to finish 12th or 11th, to be honest. But I'm not going to sit here and pretend they're a fantastic team. I think Motherwell are just destined to finish between like 8th and 10th. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I, I don't see them being good enough to finish much higher, but I don't see them being bad enough to go down. Yes, Chris Sutton agrees, he put them 8th, and this is what he said, and I quote, It could be any order from 8th downwards. Of course, Motherwell lost a lot of goals with the departure of Bear. He was our outstanding player last season. There have also been a lot of injuries to players who would be the first pick, so immediately Stuart Kettlewell is on the back foot. I do, though, think he'll get them organised, and they will do okay this season, end of quote. So again, I agree with Sutton. I think, you know, it could be any order from 8th down, but... Everybody is predicting Ross County and St Johnston in the bottom too, so there's a bit of truth to it. But Chris Sutton, he's failed to agree with us on this one. Yeah, Chris Sutton not agreeing with us, but it's funny he says they could finish anywhere for 8th down, but he's given them the benefit of finishing 8th. So he believes 8th's the highest they could finish, but they, they could finish below it. I'd say there's more chance than finishing above 8th than finishing 12th, to be honest. But uh, that's what Sutton's went for. 7th spot! No, 8th spot for us, sorry. We've put Hibs. The and green you, side. And you went and Hibs it. Congrats. I went and Hibs it. Well, it suits them to a tee, everybody. Holy moly. Chris Boyd agrees with Fog Football. He put them in 8th spot. And this is what he said. And I quote, I just think that the trends are still there. The excuses have already started about a lot of players being out of contract at the end of the season. They might be able to clear up the mess. The hierarchy have created it then. Short term, they're going to suffer for that. I thought they would have improved, but at this moment in time, I'm just not sure. End of quote. Well, I agree with Chris Boyd. You agreed with Chris Boyd. I believe, actually, you did put initially Hibernian above Dundee. I'm the one that put Hibs 8, but we, I managed to agree there. Stalemate, bang, we'll put them 8. They are a mess, Hibs. There's no toys about it. Yep. 100%. Chris Sutton, though, he's went with ninth. He's went one place lower. He says, I like Hibs as a football club. They've had so much turmoil and gone through so many managers recently. There hasn't been much patience and now David Gray is in charge. Who knows the club well? You just can't keep overhauling a squad and bringing in new players and changing a manager. I don't know whether there will be a lot of patience this season and Hibs fans will say a bottom six finish represents a poor season. 
But they need to make small steps. It will be another. It will be another difficult season for them. End of quote. I, I, I think Chris Sutton's Kevin Hibbs. Uh, well, first of all, he says he likes him as a club. I wonder why. I think he's giving them too much credit here. Hibbs had to be looking for top six. Is it? Would, would this not be if they finish bottom six? Would that not be three bottom six finishes in a row? Absolutely, but I, I think there's a well, lot. No, would it be a, a, a so not? It's not a rhetorical quit. I don't. It would be yes. So where, where did they finish? Two seasons ago? Right, last year they finished bottom six. Yeah, I'm well aware, that's why I asked two seasons ago. The season before that, no, they did finish top five because they were in Europe. All right, so so it would be two... I still think for a club the size of Hibs, two seasons at the top six is not good enough. I look at Hibs and I see a lot of similarities with Rangers. You know why? Because... Rangers have went through a lot of managers in the last couple of years. Hell, I'm what I want come on sacked, right? But I think the key difference is, is obviously Rangers are way bigger than Hibs and got more money, etc., etc. But the gap between third best in Scotland and being tenth best is a lot smaller than what Rangers are from being second to third. And I think it's why you're with Rangers. You may as well run the gauntlet. You may as well take the risk and actually sack your managers. Yes, you can fall further and further behind Celtic by sacking managers, but at the same time, you can't settle for what's happening at Rangers. At Hibs, I do think they honestly need a bit more stability. Should they? I think Sean Maloney was the guy they probably shouldn't have sacked. You know, I look at Nick Montgomery. I think he got a lot more time than what he should have. Hold on. Out of the managers, probably Sean Maloney had the worst record. Yeah, but he got the least amount of time. I don't. I, there was nothing really to suggest that he was going to turn it around. If I was Hibbs, man, I would be. I'd want Neil Lennon back. You can piss on my pitch, big man. No, definitely. I think Neil Lennon's a good shout. He's the man I'd probably want back. In terms of what managers, I think Hibbs since Neil Lennon. I think Jack Ross. Jack. Ah, uh, Jack Ross. I think he's probably the best manager they've had. My Jack Ross was pretty and, decent. And I sure. think they got uh, rid of him too. Yeah, quickly. I'm not saying Maloney was the best, but I'm saying like, I think he summed up the amount of time that. <laughs> it's a real it's a mess I thought Nick Montgomery was a big disappointment yep I league my I came in I think they were, they were just expecting him to be like a you know a, a, a smaller shittier version of Ange and he just wasn't no so it's just shit anyway uh, we're going to move in to the last team then in the bottom six we have went with Dundee but what a Sutton and what a Boyd went with well we'll start with Chris Boyd. Holy moly. He's got Dundee in fourth, which, I mean, I'm not saying it can't happen. But this is solely based off the fact that he already knows what's happened in the first four games. Yeah, now keep in mind, we didn't know what's going on. But even then, I think it's a bold prediction, Dundee fourth, but we'll see. Button, eh, uh, button. <laughs> I'm combining Boyd and Sutton. Jensen button. Uh, Boyd said, quote, they are stronger than last season. The addition of Simon Murray will bring real pace at the top end of the pitch. Losing Luke McCowan is a huge blow for them, but I feel as if they've got enough in that area. Lyle Cameron might now see an opportunity to go and flourish, so there are players to fill that void. It's not going to be easy, of course. They're going to miss someone like Luke McCowan who's moved for one million, but I think Dundee have shown they are a top six team. End of quote. Uh, Sutton then went on to say, sick for Dundee. And he said, quote, their big issue is losing Luke McCowan and how they'll cope without him. They surprised me last season. I think I had them relegated, which shows what I know. Tony Docky is shrewd and knows the game well, learning and absorbing lots during his time as Derek McInnes' assistant. And he set his team up really well. I'm mightily impressed with them. They've got Lyle Cameron, who is a decent player. And bringing in Simon Murray is a really good piece of business. End of quote. So, I mean, both Boyd and Sutton rate Lyle Cameron, and I do as well. Don't get me wrong. Uh, although Sutton only naming Lyle Cameron as a decent player. It's like he's saying they've only got one decent player. Almost. Yeah. I think that's just a lack of knowledge, to be honest with Sutton. Yeah, uh, then, I mean, I think Simon Murray is a good piece of business, but I can't say he's going to be the difference maker between finishing like 6th, 4th or you know, below that, bottom 6th. Uh, I mean, and Boyd says they're stronger this season. Are they stronger? How are they stronger after losing Luke McC- I'm not sure I agree with that. Yeah. The captain losing their best player. I, I'm, I'm just not convinced that Dundee are now a stronger team. 
now that they've lost Luke McCowan. I, I don't agree with these guys. I mean, I could see them sneaking top six. If, it, if I'm going to agree with anyone, I'll go with Sutton in sixth. I think he's a lot more likely to be I think corrected. Boyd is just banking on the fact that Hearts and Kelly have had such a shite start to the season. They won't recover? Aye. Which will make for an interesting season if they don't. That's for sure. But uh, moving on. Are Dundee stronger? No, they're not. They've lost Luke McCoy. But the loss of him outweighs Simon Murray and the rest of the people they've brought in for me. Yeah, I thought they had a decent transfer window, but I, I just don't think they're stronger because they've lost their best player and they've lost their captain. That, to me, that makes you weaker. Now, if Rangers lost their captain, maybe they'd be stronger. But sixth spot, we've got St Mirren. Yeah, we've got St Mirren. that They finished sixth last season. We've predicted them to finish sixth again. However, what about Boyd? What about Sutton? Well, it's a double seven. They were in agreeance. Both of them have went with seventh. Boyd said, quote, They are a big physical team and they will cause a lot of sides problems, but I just feel others will have that little bit extra to push above them to get into the top six. St Mirren could sneak in and upset my predictions, but I worry about them at the top end of the pitch. They don't have an out-and-out -out goal scorer, and that is why I feel they might just struggle to get into the top half of the table. End of quote. Sutton said, quote, I don't know why I'm writing them off. They're effective when they get it right, but I don't think they have a great deal of flair in the team. There has been a fair bit of change at St Mirren, and although Stephen Robinson has brought in a lot of promise in signings, he has lost a few. I think the manager has overachieved. He's gone in there and done well, but I think they'll just miss out. End of quote. Boyd says that they don't have a, an out-and-out -out goal scorer. What would you describe Fan Fina's? I would describe as an out and out goal scorer, but the problem is that spell at Kelly last season. Yeah, that's actually made me doubt Fanfine. Yep, so again, that is bad. But seventh, is it low? Yes, but we've put them six, so it's not that low. But at the same time, I think with their predictions, some being really bold, I'm not that surprised about seventh there for Boyd. Is it really low? I mean, are St Mirren in a position where they should be expecting to finish above seven every season? I don't well, know. I, I, don't think, I think based off the start of the season, there's no reason why they can't get top six. Well, we've got them in sixth. Uh, Boyd and Sutton have went with seventh. We'll see. We'll see. Up next for us, we have Aberdeen. We've got Aberdeen in, in fifth place. Now, keep in mind, we did this at the beginning of the season, so we didn't have hindsight of knowing Aberdeen would uh, <laughs> go 4 out of 4. But they have, and obviously Boyd and Sutton benefit from that, and they've again agreed. They both went with third. Boyd said, quote, I'm purely saying this based on the start of the other, start the other teams have made as I'm not getting carried away with Aberdeen. They've had a good start, but they are yet to face any really tough opponents. They have a run of fixtures that will be difficult for them. Having lost someone like Bojan Miofsky, I can't see them keeping this form for long. They do have a points gap on the rest, but they will be dragged back into it. I'm still to be convinced by them. End of quote. I mean, he says they're going to be dragged back into it, yet he's put them first. Yeah, it sounds like a guy that's put them, like, seventh or something. Either they're going to get pumped by the rest of them. Yeah, I mean, he's, like, basically saying, ah, they haven't played anybody, they're going to struggle to, uh, you know, recover if you're losing Miofsky. They'll get dragged back into it, I'm going third. <laughs> you know what, though, I'm actually surprised up next, because Sutton's put them third. I actually thought he might risk it for a biscuit and put them second. Well, he hasn't. Sutton said, quote, Jimmy Phelan has brought in one or two players he knows well, which will really help. They've been a topsy-turvy team in the last few seasons where they've had patches where they've done really well and then the wheels came off. They seem to have taken their time in appointing Jimmy Phelan and he's a builder of clubs. He built Ellsberg and it took him three years to get them to a really decent level. And he'll be hoping to do the same with Aberdeen, who are a big club, but they're striving for consistency. I think splitting the old firm isn't going to happen. It's a great start for him. But let's not get too carried away just yet, end of quote. I mean, you, you just know that Chris Sutton wants to get carried away, but maybe yeah. he doesn't want egg on his face. But see, that's what I kind of respect for Sutton and Celtic pundits and, like, players, because actions speak louder than words. See Celtic right now, they are in every position to twist the knife, man, and, and make these ridiculous claims that Aberdeen will finish. I mean, there's people on YouTube, oh, it's Steely. He predicted Celtic to finish third the, the season after 55. And Sutton could very well have put them second here, but he hasn't because, you know what, he's went with his head. End of the day, could, could Aberdeen finish second? Yes, they could, because it's a good start. 
that's undeniable, but more often than not, I mean, put it this way, come on, 2028, if Rangers finish third, man, what's going on? Well, I don't think you'll be seeing it that deal if Rangers finish third. No, I won't be. But, yeah, we, we've disagreed here, obviously. If we were to do it now, I would put Aberdeen easy third. Why? If not higher. Like, it's four games, but, I mean, they're like 11 points clear of their main rivals at the end of the day. Probably will be 14 yep. after the next game. So, so. yeah. Uh, no, I kind of disagree with that. Uh, I, I think Aberdeen will finish third minimum, so we'll see. Up next, we've got Kelly. Moya Kelly! Moya Kelly! Get the, Moya Kelly! Get the pies on. Uh, right, so here we go. Chris Boyd has went with sixth for his former team. He says, quote, if there has been one team that's been hindered by European games, it's Kilmarnock. Derek McKinnon knows how to get results, and I would be absolutely astonished if their form doesn't start improving. Now that Europe is over, yes, it's been a slow start, but I think they will still have enough to finish top six. Sutton has went with fifth, and he says, quote, I really admire the job Derek McKinnon has done at Rugby Park. He overachieved massively last season, and they gave it a go in the Conference League qualifiers. His issue is they can't afford to pick up too many injuries. They got a going over at Celtic Park in the first game of the season, but he had half a team. Everybody knows it will click eventually for them, and they've got battle-hardened players with a sprinkle of real class. They'll certainly pick up points and results. I'm pretty sure they'll do it sooner rather than later. End of quote. Boyd, sixth. Sutton, fifth. I doubt... I, I think both of them would have went slightly higher before the start of the season. Or maybe not. I mean, maybe Sutton would have had them fifth. I'm not convinced that Boyd had done D above Kilmarnock before a ball was kicked, though. No, he definitely didn't. But here, a ball has been kicked. Numerous balls have been kicked. But it's time to move into your team. Hearts, because we put them third. And there's not a chance they're going to finish third. And there's not... Well, well I wouldn't say there's not a chance, man. I still think they could do it. But the, the, the turnaround needs Patience to happen. Patience is key, according to Stephen Naismith. The, the turnaround that needs to happen now, right? They really can't be waiting much longer. The, the, I mean, the t time to... The time to start winning games and catching is... That time is up. Boyd has went fifth. He says, quote, I've been very disappointed with Hearts' start to the season. They've played two European games in addition to their domestic duties. It's not as if it's been a hard shift for them. Do I fear for Stephen Naismith? Yes. If their poor run continues for another week or so, they're going to have to start getting results. I'm predicting fifth purely on the size of the club and the expectations, because right now they're a million miles away from where they should be, but I do think they will improve, end of quote. Sutton, though, he's went one place higher. He's went with fourth. He said, quote, just because I've had a bad start doesn't really mean it's over. I do think Stephen Naismith did a great job last season. I think they've got a really decent squad. They are in the Conference League too, and that balance may be tricky for them. Keeping Lauren Shankland is a big deal. They do have reasonable strength and depth, and they'll get it together soon. When they do, they'll go on a run. I'm not going to write hearts off after just four games. I do think there's a need for patience from the fans. End of quote. Right, I'm actually I'm agreeing with Chris Sutton here, and there's, a, there's two reasons why. First of all, he thinks fourth. For me, it's early on. We're only four games in. There's more than enough time for Hearts to turn this around. If we were struggling, if we were down the bottom of the table halfway through the season or a third of the way through the season, fair enough. But there's still 34 games left, plenty of points to play for. There's no reason why Hearts can't turn it around and get back into fourth spot. So. Due to the amount of games to go, I think Hearts will finish fourth. Another reason why I think Hearts will finish fourth is because if you look at some of the teams you'd maybe be expecting to be competing with Hearts, they've also struggled. So, for example, Kilmarnock is a team that I think that Hearts could have been battling for with fourth place. And thankfully for Hearts, Kilmarnock have also had a poor start because they were in Europe. So, you know, Hearts don't need to catch Kilmarnock. They're literally right with them. Uh, you look at Hibs, they're literally right with them. Albeit, yeah, they're, they're a decent amount behind Dundee. But for me, I, I just think Dundee aren't that strong and I think they will drop off anyway. So I'd be more concerned if Kilmarnock had the start to the season that Aberdeen had. If Kilmarnock had four wins out of four and they were on 12 points, then I'd say maybe fourth is looking tight. 
But I still think Hearts should be finishing fourth considering there's 34 games to go and some of the teams that you'd be expecting them to be battling with for fourth place have also started the season poorly. Hearts have got the squad to finish third, right? And I think the key difference is with teams around them, if they sack their manager, they would struggle. I think Hearts, if they actually sack their manager, they'll do better. I think if they keep Naismith, it'll be a bottom six finish. If they sack him, they'll finish easy fourth. How about those apples? Well, those apples taste alright to me. They taste alright to me, but this one tastes particularly sour because we are putting in Rangers in second. Everyone knew that. Everyone came to terms with that months ago. But the real question is, what did Chris Boyd and Chris Sutton put in second place? Well, it's it's a goal for Joe. It's two. It's a double. It's a double whiskey here. It's all over. Chris Boyd put them second. Um, you know, some people would label Boyd as not a real Rangers fan for doing this, but wake up and smell the coffee, man. If you're put if you're if you're putting Rangers first at this stage, it, it's delusion, isn't it? It's I. I don't see how you can. Have them first, I mean. You know, I've put them first every other year apart from this year, so um, that would absolutely uh, be a difference maker. But let's see here what Chris Boyd had to say. And I quote, I knew it was going to be a tough season. I didn't think it would be as tough as this. I still think they'll have more than the rest, but I don't think it's going to be as easy as it's been over the last few years to get that second place. Once the season settles down a bit and players get up to match speed, they'll be okay. Once injuries start to hit the smaller teams, then you'll see the bigger ones pull away. Rangers have more than enough to finish second, but I don't think they have enough to challenge second. Uh, Celtic, sorry, end of quote. So, Boyd's not convinced they'll finish second, but he thinks, you know, when the season sorts itself out, they will, which is pretty fucking damning, man. I think the problem with that is, though... Aberdeen don't have Europe. Rangers have eight games. Rangers have an injury hit squad. They, they, they're shite with injuries. Rangers, if, they, if Rangers have a few injury crises, that could absolutely work against them. And they, they could very easily finish third if the injury crisis hit. Yeah, like I said, the squad ain't that big. If Rangers do get injuries and the fact that they are guaranteed to be playing European football up until January, Aberdeen do not have that worry. <sighs> I mean, I don't think it's beyond the possibility that Rangers finish b below second. I still think they're favourites for second. I would I would back them to finish second. But with Aberdeen, like I said, focusing purely on domestic football, Rangers having to fight in the continental football, you know, playing on those Thursday nights, it, it, it can hamper you. Well, I mean, we've seen in the qualifiers how much Kilmarnock have struggled. Yep. So, and St Mirren as well, you know, they, they've but not the, had... <laughs> The key thing is, is Boyd's like, all oh, the bigger teams pull away once injuries hit. Rangers have a fucking minute squad. Like, there's there's not much to it. Like, it's a really small squad. You said you you always say it's light. It is light. It's like lighty salt at crisps. There's fucking he. I think it's very light. Like, I think they let too many players go. Yep. Uh, say it once. I'll say it again. Chris Sutton said second, and I quote: "Philip Clement says Rangers will get better, but they are still a work in progress. There's been such an overhaul and a messy summer, and they're going to take time to get." Gel, baby. Whether Clement gets the time remains to be seen. All he'll want is players to be hanging on in there and just staying on Celtic's coattails. But then, as the season progresses, look to really hit a rhythm and find his way past them. It's fair to judge Clement this season rather than last when he inherited a real mess. This season, it's his team and there will be no excuses. End of quote. Really, though? Yeah, did Clement inherit a mess last season? Yeah, we were seven points behind, right? But are Rangers not equally and it's just a mess now as they were last season when he came in? I think you could argue he's had two transfer windows, so... Well, you could argue how, that. How, how many does he need? Yeah, I'm but... Not, I'm not, I don't think it's completely Yeah, but Clement's best, Clement's best form came when we were in a mess. So work out. Do you ever think Clement's best form came when Michael Beale was still... Running the, show, uh, running the show and he just got the manager bounce. Potentially. Anyway, uh, Celtic in at first place, so let's see what they had to say about the mighty... Mighty green and white. Yep, uh, brilliant guys. I love talking about it. I really, really don't. Anyway, Chris Boyd's kept this short and sweet. A uh, couple of paragraphs. <laughs> <laughs> A couple of lines in there. All right. Even, I've been impressed by the way Celtic have started this season, that takes a lot for me to say that, I just get the feeling they're going to have too much, the business they've done, they're strong enough and will win the league by a good few points, end of quote. 
I mean, Boyd's not happy. I'm not happy. Are you happy? No, Boyd keeping it simple there. I mean, he's, he's hardly going to wax lyrical, is he? No, he's not. Chris Sutton, though, and I quote, they've started the domestic season really strongly and fast. Brendan is back in his second season. I think it's been a smooth pre-season for Celtic. They'll have to cope with the demands of Champions League football as well, hence why it was so important to bring new players in. Brendan's strongest suit is coaching and developing players, so I think they'll be happy with the work they've done in the window, and they're still the team to beat, end of quote. Sutton could have went way further than he did there, but it's all over, man. But Boyd, yo, Boyd said after the Hearts draw, Celtic were going to win the league. So let's not pretend that it's four games in, that's what he's saying. No, it's not. Um, I agree with both of them. Celtic will finish first. I, I mean, Sutton brings up Champions League. I don't think the Champions League's an issue, because... First and second in Scotland, they will always be guaranteed some form of group stage football, so... You, Rangers, whoever finishes second, they're never going to have the advantage of oh, no no continental football because they're, they're going to be in some form of competition. But the reality is you need... I mean, the benefits of... No, you do, but you're never... Really, like, if Rangers weren't in Europe at all, I mean... It's I, a loss of money. I think you could make a better case for them, though, challenging for the league title. Yeah, but then the money you're missing out on... Extra revenue. And if anything, I mean, I actually think that over the years, being in the Europa League has actually been harder than being in the Champions League because you're playing on the Thursday. Yeah, Thursday And it's Sunday. just disrupting you more. So you're always, like, playing catch-up as well with your Sunday game being postponed an extra day. So. And it's no different this year. No different this year. So, uh, yeah, I agree. I mean, I think Celtic will win the league. I mean, for the most part, I think Sutton and Boyd have got similar predictions to us and... Had they predicted them at the start of the season, I think we would have seen even closer predictions to us. But, you know, they've went with who they've went with. I, I can't really say that there's... I mean, the, the one I the one I really don't agree with is probably Dundee fourth. And I, I'm a, I, I phrase Dundee a lot. Like, I, just, I don't know. I don't see them finishing fourth. Yeah, it's... it's nah. But then again, it's only two places higher than they finished last season. And obviously... You know, Kilmarnock and Hearts have had really poor starts. So who knows? But we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Anyway, guys, that's your Scottish Premiership League predictions there. Let us know down below. Do you agree? Uh, do you disagree? Do you think that Boyd and Sutton are on the money? Who do you think's got the better predictions? Who do you think will get more right? And, uh, yeah, can anybody stop Celtic from winning the league? According to Sutton and Boyd, the answer to that is no. Anyway, guys, that's it. We'll catch you in the next one. Till then... Peace.